it's watermelon season, so today I'm gonna to show you how to cut a watermelon into several different shapes. We're gonna do triangles, we're gonna do sticks that make it easy for kids to get out and hold with their hands. We're gonna do triangles and what else did I say? Cubes, sticks, okay, we got it. And we're gonna do some cutouts. I've got a couple of shapes here, cookie cutter shapes, hearts, whatever you have. If you wanna do that with the kids, that'll be kind of fun too. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after this. All right, so before we get started, I've got two chef jokes for you, all right? So I'm gonna start off with one now and then I'll give you the other one later. So when you're driving in a car and you come to a signal, red means stop and green means go, right? So when does red mean go and green means stop? When you're eating a watermelon. All right, let's get started. Now when you're at the store picking out a watermelon, you wanna pick out a good one, right? That's what we all hope for and it's always sort of a gamble. And so I wanna talk about that for just a second. Uh, this little water watermelon here is one that was delivered to me so I didn't get a chance to pick it out. Somebody picked it for me. This one, however, I got to pick out at the store yesterday. And what you wanna look for, one of the things you wanna look for is that the watermelon is, looks, is heavy for its size. So when I went to go pick this one up, I was like, oh boy, is this thing heavy? You know, this thing weighs, I don't know, man, 15 pounds and it feels like a lot. As opposed to this one for its size, it doesn't feel heavy at all. So I'm a little concerned about this one. I have my doubts about this one, but we'll find out. Anyway, so that's one thing you wanna look for. You want it to be heavy for its size. The other thing I look for is that yellow spot. So rotate your watermelon and you find that nice big yellow spot like right here. They say that that's you know, an indication it's been sitting there, it's been ripening, it's nice and sweet. So that's what I look for. This one, very tiny, little, barely a yellow spot at all. So like I said, we'll see. Uh, let's see what else. Oh yes, you wanna thump on your watermelon. It's supposed to sound really hollow. Can you hear that? That one sounds pretty hollow. This one, not so much. This one definitely sounds more hollow. So those are the three things I look for. Give it a try. Hey, you never know in the end, right? It's always a guess. The number one thing that you should be thinking about when you cut a watermelon, especially a big one like this, safety. All right, we gotta be safe. We don't, this thing is, you know, heavy and moves and you just wanna make sure that you don't cut yourself. So use, <laughs> this is gonna sound funny, but use a sharp knife, all right? I'm gonna cut this in half, start with the tip, Oh, and did I mention? No, I didn't. You wanna give your watermelons a nice rinse, and I did that already. I run, just ran some water over it, washed it off a little bit, because other people are handling in these watermelons too, right? Not just you. So, I'm cutting down and I'm gonna rotate the watermelon. You see how I'm rotating the watermelon? And I'm just making my cut. And it should be pretty much, pretty even. So it lines up. It's not as red as I had hoped that it would be in the middle. I hope that's not an indication that it's not that sweet. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna cut this in half again. And then we'll cut this in half. This is for our triangles, right? So now we've got this triangular shape here. Now, depending on how big you want these triangle pieces, maybe you only want them half of that size. So in that case, we can cut these again. And then you can just cut these into like one inch pieces. And if you have these little pieces left over, you can save those. We'll use those for something else. I'll show you later. And let's say if you don't want the rind on there, you could cut it off on each one or you can do it and start up here and you can just trim this right out. And then you can slice down. When you've got pieces like this, you can even alternate them if you want, make it look a little bit decorative like that. There's a lot of different things you can do, but those that's basically your triangular si shapes. Another thing you can do, here's our other half or our quarter of the um, triangle pieces, is if you wanna get rid of that rind right away, you could just start cutting it down like this and just take a little piece off 
and try not to get too much into the red. That was pretty good. And just follow it down. And you just trim off the white because that doesn't taste very good. And then you can cut this again. We're still on our triangle theme here. Just showing you different ways. And then I would just, you could cut this very thin and put it on a platter. You know, like say you're having like a buffet kind of meal and you put out these nice slices that are about a quarter inch thick. Like that. And that way people come along with and just pick up a piece and it's all ready to eat. So now I'm going to take the other half of that watermelon. I'm going to place it cut side down in a bowl. And this is where we're going to cut our little sticks. So I'm going to start cutting into, the, into this. Let me try this other knife here. This is a serrated knife. So you want to cut all the way down and through to the bottom. Make sure everything's cut. And we're cutting these about one inch uh, thick. Hopefully you can see that. Now you don't have to cut this in a bowl, but I think the bowl is going to help keep it together once I get it cut. And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees, and then we'll just cut it the other direction. So I'm going to take the last part of our watermelon, which is, you know, cut like this, and we're going to cut it into cubes. Cubes are probably the easiest thing. I like the idea of taking the knife and trimming off, you know, so I'll do that with this. I'll just trim off the rind. Before we get into cutting our mini watermelon, we've got to do our second chef joke. So here we go. Why do watermelons have fancy weddings? Because they can't elope. <laughs> so now we're going to cut our shapes. That's the little, you know, cookie cutter cutouts that we have that, you know, if you want to just have the kids do that, it'd be great. You probably should use the bigger watermelon. I use that for our demonstrations on the, you know, all the other shapes, the triangles and sticks and the cubes and whatnot. So I'm going to do it with this one. Uh, and it'll still work. It's just you want a bigger surface area, right? So the bigger watermelon would have been a little better. But we can do it with this as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut this in half, and then we're going to cut just uh, slices, big slices, that are not any thicker than the thickness of our cutout. So you want to measure that. Okay, this is about an inch. You don't want your pieces to be bigger than an inch because otherwise it won't go through. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to cut this in half. off that bottom. Now why did I do that? So that it will be a little more stable when I cut it. It's not going to roll around as much. Now remember I want to make this cut no thicker than this, okay? You take your cookie cutter and you, you, you know, get it to the edge as close as you can. And of course just push down and see how many of these you can get in here. So that's some good tasting watermelon.
So I found that actually the small watermelon, the one that was more red, which you can see in this picture with the hearts, was actually a little bit sweeter than the big watermelon. So good luck on picking out a watermelon. So we talked about what might we do with the extra watermelon that we cut out of the hearts, right? We had these little scrap kind of pieces. They weren't that attractive. That's okay. Take a glass or get a picture, fill it with water. I've got frozen blueberries in here. I'm gonna use some Pellegrino. Pour that in. Those blueberries make it look all purpley. And uh, throw in some watermelon. You got some nice flavored water here that you can drink and enjoy and not waste the watermelon. And like I said, you can do a whole picture of it and put it in your fridge and keep it for the day. Cheers, everybody. Ah, delicious, and you can even take one of your, one of your little spikes, put it in there and enjoy. So if you'd like to see another recipe involving fruit, I've got a recipe for you on how to cut up a pineapple in a very decorative way. And I'll leave a link for you right over here. Check out that video, click on it, and watch that one after this. And I think you're gonna really love it. It's a very popular video, by the way. If you'd like to see another watermelon recipe, I've got a, a drink for you, a watermelon agua fresca. Check that out, it's a popular video as well, and you can use this watermelon to make that. So I'll leave a link for that right down here. Check those videos out, I hope you enjoy them. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. All right, see you next time, everybody. Have a good day.